Okay, let's see here. This is what I call the perfect presentation um, diagram for you. And what I'm really trying to do is set you up as an angler on how to understand how fish are seeing and feeding on your flies and where you need to put your fly in accordance to the leader formula, in accordance to the fly, etc., so that you can have some success. So I really try to um, look at this as how things are positioned. If you see here where the fish is in the center of the, the photo, um, the round it is this global shape. This global shape represents how the fish may see and move um, as, as a fish, okay? Then in that globe are two elements. There's this yellow element, okay? And then this orange element. The yellow element represents where the fish will have um, a typical area to feed within. You can see with its conical site of vision here highlighted in red, that conical vision shows where it's actually seen, but it may move forward up into that point or backward and draw back and come into this latter half of the yellow side, okay? So I talk about this sphere as the sphere of opportunity for the fish. So depending on the water level, they may go within that sphere of opportunity. That's a likelihood. Next is when I'm casting, how do I cast to ensure that I come into the vision cycle of the fish and optimize that? And the importance is, is that I wanna cast beyond the vision site of the fish but not too far beyond. If I cast too far beyond, I will actually present the line within this vision site of the fish. And what I wanna do is keep that limited to just my leader. So I have to cast ahead of the vision site, but not too far out. And when I cast ahead, what happens is that I give my fly the opportunity to one, land, two, settle into place and get into its good drift. And the key is, is that prior to the vision, conical vision here, I achieve my optimal drift so that when it comes into the vision, it's drifting correctly and drifting through the vision area correctly until it then exits and then I can recast. What I see very often is one, casts that are too far, so the line is seen by the fish and the fish becomes lined what i call and they get spooked they get weary of eating the next is when you cast correctly and you land your leader within that formula the fish doesn't see it doesn't you don't achieve the spook and you get this really nice drift area that is what i consider a sacrificial zone of good drift right? So there's two types of sacrificial drifts. One is I have a bad drift area where I'm going to cast up higher. I'm going to let it drift bad. I don't really care, but I want it to get into the right drift in time for the fish to see. And that's what we're doing is we're building in this window ahead of the conical vision of the fish so that your drift is drifting smooth, coming into the fish, fish's vision smooth. Because if I see it show up, in a rare form, but then it changes, I still get that weariness. That's the thought process here. So achieving that early, arriving into the fish's vision in good drift, and then exiting the vision in a good drift, still within that sphere of opportunity, and then realizing, okay, I did or didn't take the fish, and I'm gonna recast. And that might resolve in a, um, a, a wait in time and resting the fish, or it may be an immediate recast, or it may be a change of a bug, et cetera, et cetera. But that's my suggestion for you when we talk about the perfect drift scenario. Good luck out there. If you like the video, subscribe and give us a follow. We'll talk to you.